Every year, the examiners report in A-level physics note that students do the same mistakes. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into those mistakes so that you can avoid them. Mistake number one, multi-step calculations. In GCSE, it's very often that we have simple step calculations. Now, what is that exactly? For instance, if you had the formula for kinetic energy and if you're given the mass and the speed of the object, you could calculate its kinetic energy. Multi-step calculations involve multiple lines of work, lots of rearranging, and sometimes bringing concepts together. Chances are that if you can master those, then the rest of the problems will feel easier. Successful students tend to do really well on multi-step calculations. Like any other skill, this can be practiced. But how do we do this? Well, after you finish a topic, pick a problem set, and then simply look for the calculation questions that are three or four marks. Next one, linking practical work to exam technique. Experiments are not only really fun to do in the laboratory, but they also provide an important skill set to explore relationships between physical quantities. There are lots of statements that you should not miss out in practical procedures. The simple statement, I will vary something and then measure something else, should be a standard way of describing an experiment. For example, you could vary the length of a pendulum and measure the effect that it has on its time period. In many questions, it can also be very useful to note how exactly you're going to vary something. For instance, you could vary the acceleration of a ball down a ramp by changing the angle of an inclined plane. The next one virtually always stops most of the examiner's reports, and that is showing your thinking in a disorganized way. Have a look at those two statements. Which one do you think would have taken less time potentially to arrive at an answer? Which one do you think it would be easier for an examiner to mark as well? Sometimes you may not see exactly how a question can be answered, and you may write down on different parts of the page. What you'd always do is what you should always do is write down in logical steps, including any equal signs, any assumptions that you make, clear substitutions, and final answers. This is a skill that should really become a habit, and the only way to do this is to do this on a regular basis rather than just in exams. Not reading the question fully. This is almost like a psychological phenomenon where you start reading a relatively long sort of question, and then you think, okay, I know how to solve that, but then the last line may be asking you about something relatively different to the way the question started. So keep in mind, very often the very last sentence will tell you exactly what to do. Do not ignore this. The next one is super popular in examiner's reports as well. If there's a multi-response question, make sure to have answered every single point that they're asking you for. Some of them may be relatively easy and you don't want to miss an opportunity for easy marks. Definitions in A-level physics do come up. A lot of the times they're very specific as well. If you are successful in A-level physics, you will be able to recall them. The detail is important. For instance, in the definition of, say, wave superposition, if you do not not mention the word displacement, you are unlikely to score the mark. Not doing any independent work. This is probably one of the most crucial advice that I can give you. A-level physics involves a lot of material and lots of concepts that need to be mastered. Unfortunately, the time spent in class and the time spent doing homework is probably insufficient to really master them. So what you want to do is do a lot of outside of class work. For instance, after you finish a topic, let's say, motion, go on physics and maths tutor, download a problem set, do all the problems and really study the mark scheme. If there's a question that you can't do, make a note of it, put it in a separate folder. Later on, make sure to be revising from those problems. Another mistake, and that is not asking for help. If you don't understand something in a lesson, chances are there's at least seven or eight other people that probably are thinking exactly the same thing. I know that it can be daunting to ask a question in class. Another option would be to simply ask your teacher, 
after the class. You can also ask your classmates. You can watch a YouTube video to try and really understand that concept. For instance, I have a playlist that is covering the whole of A-level physics that I'm going to link in the description. In practical questions, do not write, I will just plug in some values into the equation and see if the relationship is correct. Always plot a graph. Be sure to write what's going to be on the y-axis, what's going to be on the x-axis. Remember, if the graph is a straight line for the origin, that means that whatever was on the y-axis is directly proportional to whatever is on the x-axis. Very often in A-level physics, I notice that people sometimes carry gaps in knowledge for months, maybe even more than a year. For instance, if you don't understand how to resolve vectors into components or how to combine uncertainties, well, those things are almost guaranteed to come up in one form or another in your real exams. So those need to be addressed as quickly as possible. Once again, you can refer to my playlist where I have detailed videos with practice questions on all of these. Questions involving logarithms appear quite a lot in A-level physics. Particularly if you're not doing A-level maths, these can be a little bit daunting. Master the rules for logarithms in both graphical questions and calculations, because otherwise you may be limiting yourself to the maximum number of marks that are available to you. This is an interesting one and also a very specific one, but sometimes in A-level physics, I notice that when calculating the gradient, a student may take a value from a table of results rather than from their line of best fit. Now, if the two do not match, the examiner will not be able to award you that mark. Talking about gradients, remember to make your gradient triangle large. Otherwise, you will not be able to gain that mark. Describe and explain questions are often hidden mathsy questions. What do I mean by that? If you had to describe the effect on a certain quantity and then explain it, well, think about an equation which tells you what will happen to that quantity. Then see what the relationship is. If something increases, what's going to happen to the quantity in question? You could even plug in some easy numbers, say one and two, and then actually calculate the result and see whether your quantity has increased or decreased, whether it has doubled, etc. Make sure to use really precise language. For instance, if the velocity is increasing at a constant rate, the word constant is often underlined in mark schemes. Another mistake is not keeping your passion for physics alive. Now, this is a big one because physics can be very, very tedious if you're not actually enjoying it. Whenever I teach a topic, I always just think, okay, what's the most interesting thing that I can say about this particular topic before I teach it? See if you can do the same for learning. When you're learning about astrophysics, circular motion experiments, ask yourselves, why is this relevant? Why is this really, really interesting? And you're gonna find that learning becomes just so much easier when you're actually enjoying it. Another mistake is not using the formula booklet. Have a printed copy and then always have it on hand when you're solving problems. This way your brain will remember exactly where a certain equation is, where the values are given, exactly where they are, and this will actually speed up your exam performance. Another one that appears every single year is missing multiple choice questions. What usually happens is you're under pressure and then you come across a multiple choice question that you decide to leave for later but you never end up coming back for it. Don't do this. What you should do instead is try and immediately see if you can spot answers that are definitely not correct. You would typically be able to eliminate one or two answers. Then pick one from the remaining ones. Make a note of which question you were struggling with and then if you have time come back for it at the end of the paper. Command words in A-level physics are crucial. Describe, explain, and show or calculate will mean that we would require a completely different answer. Now, describe means tell me what happens to a physical quantity. Remember, do not answer this simplistically. If something is increasing at a constant rate or if it's increasing non-linearly, make sure to note this. Explain, well, tell me why something is happening. Quote an equation, quote a principle, 
principle. Maybe it's conservation of energy. Maybe it's the principle of moments or Newton's second law. Show, on the other hand, means that essentially we have a derivation, they've already given us an answer to strive for, and then the marks allocated for that question will be entirely in the working out. So make sure to include extra steps in your working out, and also that your work is logically structured and easy to mark for somebody else. If it's a show question, I would try and include a couple of extra steps that normally I wouldn't. Calculation and algebra mistakes. These happen to everyone from time to time, but there are ways to minimize it. For instance, whenever there's a square, I tell myself that I'm statistically likely to miss carrying it through an equation every once in a while, so that's why I always remind myself of this. At the end of a calculation question, always do a quick sanity check. If you're calculating the mass of a galaxy, and if you get a few kilograms as the answer, chances are probably something's gone wrong, and you need to go back and fix it. Don't round significant figures too early in the question. This can lead to a rounding error, so only round once right at the end for your final answer. Be confident in applying physics to new situations. This is what science and engineering is all about. In your real exams, you will come across an experiment or a situation in which to apply the physics that you've never come across before, and that is totally fine. This is what physics is all about, getting the theory and then applying it to new situations. Make sure to practice this. Pick lots of past papers that you've not seen before, Try applying the physics that you've learned in class to brand new situations, and the exams will end up feeling no different. Use bullet points in extended response questions. These will not only organize your thought process, but they will also make it a lot easier for an examiner to mark your work. Do timed past papers. Most students start timing their past papers a little bit too late. Try and incorporate that into your learning. For instance, if you do a topical test of a past paper from physics and maths tutor, let's say, then time yourself on it. Give yourself one hour, see how you get on with that paper. If you're in year 13, have a look at all the AS papers and do them under time conditions. This will be invaluable and will give you an edge because you'll already be working on exam technique relatively early in your exam preparation. Doing mistakes in exams can feel incredibly frustrating, so to give yourselves the best chance of avoiding them, have a look at this video as well on which I cover how I avoid mistakes exactly right over here.